I'm going to present to you. Um, Giuseppe Negro got his master's degree in Bari with the thesis uh, Large Deviations and Non-Equilibrium Phase Transition. And uh, a few years uh, uh, later, he got his PhD with modeling and the simulations of dynamics and the motility in active fluids. Since then, he has been a postdoc in Bari and also at the University of Edinburgh. And now he has a temporary position as a researcher in Bari and uh, he is going to give a talk with the title a multicolor polymer model facilitating prediction of 3D structure and transcriptional activity of human chromosomes please uh, giuseppe yeah okay thank you very much i'm really grateful for this opportunity to talk about our work i just simplified the little, little title in the slide because it was too long Sorry for that, uh, but I, and today I will uh, speak about uh, our work on a polymer model to study uh, the transcription in human chromatin. So this, um, this work has been done in collaboration with uh, Massimiliano Semeraro and Giuseppe Gonnella in Bari, uh, Antonio Suma also in Bari, and Davide Marinduzzo in Edinburgh, and uh, uh, Peter Cook, that is a biologist in Oxford. So. <clears throat> Uh, the main point here is, uh, um, the main aim is to try to understand uh, chromosome organization. So the, uh, there, this is quite an important uh, topic in biophysics and to understand why um, you can just think about the fact that in each human nucleus there, uh, there is about two meters of DNA and it has to fit in a nucleus that is uh, like 10 microns. So clearly there has to be uh, some organization and there are many levels uh, starting from uh, um, the double helix. So DNA itself is a double helix of two nanometers in diameter. While um, uh, if you go on uh, larger length scales, you have that DNA is wrapped around proteins that are called histones, that are these ones. And uh, to form a material, a composite material that is called uh, chromatin. And this uh, uh, actually uh, the length scale is 10 nanometers. So, uh, and you have more levels of organization here. The situation is more complex and less known. And at the end, you see the typical sh X shape of chromosomes that you probably already seen. This is for uh, during mitosis, during cell division, even if this is not the topic of our talk, but it was just to visualize all the scales. So why this um, huge uh, organization, complex organization um, is so important? Well, DNA uh, needs to be accessed to perform many vital uh, functions, like for example, transcription. Transcription in, is the, <clears throat> um, the, the uh, is actually the, the main process that DNA uh, has to perform uh, in um, with other proteins that are called like um, uh, transcription factors and polymerases, and these proteins with polymerases actually attach to the uh, to the region of the genome that has to be transcribed, and um, the, the the transcription factors these proteins actually control the rate and uh, bind to, to, to specific region of the DNA sequence. So these proteins are uh, not organized uh, randomly in the nucleus and uh, um, are actually organized in clusters. And generically, these clusters are known as uh, nuclear bodies. So the existence of these uh, kind of microphase separation inside the nucleus is quite, is quite universal. And there are many examples like uh, this one of uh, the PML bodies. These are quite uh, important because they are connected to function. Uh, they are not present in some kind of cancer cells. Um, and the most exciting, uh, from my point of view, example of microphase separation is, uh, inside the nucleus is the one of transcription factories that were studied uh, 20 years ago by our collaborator, Peter Cook. Um, and uh, here you see um, a, a dyed in green, nascent RNA. So it means that in those regions, you have transcription. Those regions are connected to, to function, to transcription. And the, the, the common knowledge here is that uh, polymerases 
cluster in segregated clusters. So different kind of polymerases form different clusters. And um, this is uh, actually the, the, the uh, quite the general, uh, the general ground uh, we are working on. Uh, to model these, uh, at least DNA and chromatin, you can start from all atom models that are these ones. So you can have all the degree of um, um, of uh, all the degrees of liberty actually captured by the model. Um, and these models are actually um, used if you are interested in some small fragments of DNA or in protein DNA interactions. But if you are interested in chromatin and its organization, these full atoms model, uh, full, um, all atoms models are actually quite expensive. Um, and <clears throat> you, uh, it turns out that you just need to coarse grain and the bit chain model in which all the internal structure of the fiber is not resolved is actually uh, enough to model the conformation of chromatin and some functions as I will show you in the results. So this could seem quite a, a um, crude model, but it's actually quite successful. So to make it successful, you have to, do, to add some ingredients. So suppose you add um, your, bead cha uh, your chain bead that is a polymer and uh, it models chromatin. So you can have uh, uh, some special uh, beads that are these ones in red that are called transcription units. And depending on the level of the resolution of your model, these are actually uh, the, these models like genes or, in th in, um, or regions of the genome that is actually connected to transcription. You also have to add some uh, uh, diffusive, sorry, some diffusive beads that represent transcription factors. So the proteins that bind to the genes and actually initiate transcription. And these are these dark red here. And uh, an important phenomenon, an important feature of this model is that uh, if a transcription factor binds to two uh, transcription units, to two genes, it can form a loop. So you have the formation of a bridge and uh, this bridge is actually uh, closed by a loop and when you have the formation of these loops, you have an increase in concentration of the of of, um, uh, of transcription units, and so it's more prob probable for transcription factors to bind in those regions, and you got phase separation. So this is the typical molecular dynamic simulation snapshot you get. You see that you have the formation of these clusters. Um, the, these are quite dynamics in nature. Um, and the, it, it actually has an important role in the structure, entire structure of the fiber. So this is uh, uh, for the modelization, but uh, if you want to be uh, as close as possible to experimental conditions, you have to compare your results and your model with experiments. So I will not bore you uh, too much about experiments, but uh, I just need to set the ground with three kinds of experiments. So one is, how we color these uh, um, transcription units on, a, on, a, on our polymer. So one way to do that is to use uh, uh, DNA's hypersensitive sites. So these are a kind of experiments that uh, uses this uh, enzyme that is DNA's, and uh, this enzyme actually cuts regions of chromatin that is opened. And since it's opened, it's connected to function and, and transcription. You can count all the segments you get, and uh, um, you know how these segments are uh, are made, and you can compare with the genomic DNA sequence uh, uh, reference, and you can count all the counts for each region of the of the genome. In this way, you got a signal, and uh, the peaks correspond actually to genes because correspond to regions of the uh, of the uh, of the chromatin that is active uh, from a transcription point of view. So this is how you can construct the model. So this is needed to construct the model. And you can uh, perform molecular dynamic simulations and you have to compare your results with uh, um, structural data that are the IC data that is actually a contact map. So if, uh, it gives the fre frequency of contacts um, of chromatin in experiments, and this is quite uh, uh, easy to do uh, in, uh, in simulations, and this is standard uh, polymer physics uh, uh, contact maps. 
uh, if you are interested in activity, as we are, uh, we actually uh, pro uh, proposed a way to um, uh, to measure the activity of genes, just uh, measuring the fraction of time a protein, a transcription factor, spend around the transcription unit, a gene. And you get a profile that you can compare with other experiments that are called GROSIC data, that gives actually the uh, the intensity of activity of that region in the genome. So this is all about um, experiments. And uh, um, the first part, the structure, was really uh, quite well studied with uh, more sophisticated models like the POP model um, that consider an, an heteromorphic polymer to model regions of the genome that is active and inactive, or, um, and this is, uh, uh, has been developed in Edinburgh. Uh, another model is the PRISM mod, uh, method that has been de developed by the, the group of Nicodemi uh, in, uh, in Napoli, and uh, um, uh, you heard a talk uh, from Mattia Conte um, about this, but this is about structure. So you have to complicate the model if you are interested in capturing the structure of the genome. We are interested in uh, activity and the formation of clusters. And <clears throat> in fact, uh, what I told you at the beginning was only part of the story. So first of all, the existence of this cluster uh, prompt the question if um, these contain only one kind of proteins or many kind different ones. And uh, as I said, uh, in the case of uh, uh, um, polymerases, different polymerases form segregated clusters, but there is some experimental um, evidence of the existence of the so-called POTS that are high occupancy targets, G, uh, um, regions of the genome that are highly active and uh, where promiscuous uh, binding uh, is actually up in, uh, happening. So you got cluster with different kinds of proteins and um, this is quite recent and it's the main topic of our um, research. So to investigate uh, this, uh, this problem, we have uh, to introduce uh, different kinds of proteins in the model. This is, um, this is done quite easily. Uh, so starting from the, the, the very simple model I showed you uh, before of uh, a um, polymer with uh, special beads that are binding sites and transcription factors that are the protein that binds. And when they are binded, it means that this gene has been transcribed. Um, you, you go to a multicolor model, so you've got different kinds of genes and different kinds of proteins. This is not completely new in the community, but it was done for, uh, to study different problems, and these uh, proteins and different transcription units were actually modeling uh, uh, epigen so-called epigenetic markers. I will. Um, I, I hope by the end of this presentation, it will be clear what are these different kinds of proteins uh, represent. So with this multicolor model at the 30 nanometer resolution, so each bead contain, contains actually three kilobase pairs uh, of DNA, uh, we perform molecular dynamic simulations. So all beads evolve according to a Langevin equation, and um, the polymer, uh, the bead connectivity is ensured by uh, an harmonic potential, while the stiffness of the of the polymer is ensured by is controlled by bending uh, potential. And the important feature is that we have repulsion between transcription factors of the same color and between transcription factors of different colors, and you have attraction only with. The, uh, transcription units and transcription factors of the same color. Another ingredient of the model is that the proteins can switch between an on and off state. So they are not always, um, they cannot always transcribe when, when they are uh, binded to, to a gene. And this is quite important to obtain microphase separation, otherwise you would obtain a, a macrophase separation. So the, the final configuration would have been just a complete uh, phase separation. So the typical um, <clears throat> evolution of these, uh, of these molecular dynamic simulations with our multicolor model um, is the one showed, uh, shown here. So you see the formation of <coughs> different regions that are more crumpled, and this corresponds to the formation of clusters of different proteins of different colors. 
and the um, the mechanism that is at play here is the same bridging induced phase, phase separation I told you before. The only difference here is that it, it is happening for each color, each color. So to study what are the implications of the introduction of uh, um, this multicolor model, we consider the, the two toys, toys model. So these are not connected at all with experiments. They are just to understand what are the implications from the, uh, from the structure and from the activity point of view um, of um, the introduction of multicolors. We consider two uh, kind of strings, a random string, uh, where we selected uh, uh, every 30 beads uh, randomly a color, and we color that bead, and uh, pattern strings uh, with different patterns. So like uh, uh, one pattern repeating and six pattern uh, repeating uh, chains. So for the random string, the first thing we looked at was the activity, as I said. And you can see that uh, the boxed regions, so the uh, where activity is higher, corresponds to the formation of clusters. While uh, genes that are transcribing less are actually surrounded by different uh, uh, transcription units, transcription units of different kinds. So it means that the different colors are competing. And in addition, you, have, uh, you can expect a strong correlation inside the clusters and between clusters of the same color. This is what you uh, what you can uh, actually uh, conf uh, what is confirmed by um, the correlation matrix. So you just pick two uh, two genes, and you measure the correlation during time, and you construct this person correlation matrix. And the boxes here correspond to um, to clusters, and you can see that there is a strong positive correlation between neighboring uh, uh, transcription units of the same color. Uh, and while differently colored clusters compete between each other, and this corresponds to these negative regions uh, of very low correlation regions uh, uh, surra that surrounds the, the, the clusters. So the correlation is quite trivial in the one color case. It means that the introduction of this uh, multicolor polymer model is actually introducing some non trivial correlations uh, uh, as far as activity is concerned. Uh, so for the pattern strings, the situation is uh, actually uh, the same. If you look at the six pattern, you can see that there is a periodic um, for me, a periodic pattern in the activity. And uh, again, the activity is higher compared to the one pattern case. And if you look at the person uh, correlation matrix, uh, you get this uh, really structured matrix of positive and negative correlations uh, that are at play here. And uh, <clears throat> Uh, to uh, actually understand better the mechanism of the of the, of the um, emergence of these positive and negative correlations, we consider the case of mutations. So you take a cluster of uh, let's say yellow TUs here, and you start changing the color of one bead in the middle of the cluster. And what what you get is that as soon as you um, at the beginning for for small mutations. Uh, the mutated transcription units uh, are actually ejected from the cluster, while if you go to four mutations, uh, now a red cluster is formed and the wild type uh, transcription units, the original transcription units are expelled from the cluster. And this happens in a non-linear uh, uh, way. And this is quite important uh, to understand what was happening in the correlations, because if you look at the at the original situation, you got uh, from this camera graph that is activity of the of the transcription units during time, and are colored accordingly to the type of transcription units. And you can see that the original uh, yellow cluster is actually um, uh, it, it disappears, obviously, in the case of formutation. A red cluster is formed, but the red cluster is uh, inhibiting the transcription of these other regions in red because it's just attracting the transcription factors uh, in this region. And is actually um, uh, making it easier for this other region to transcribe because it's of the same color and it's quite near. And the effect is that also the yellow regions are affected and this is why you, you got the negative correlation between different kinds of cluster um, if they are separated by a long distance in the genome. So this was, this was just for toy models, but what about real data, real chromosomes? 
um, can we say something on the composition of factories with the introduction of the different transcription factors? Um, so to do that, we have to generalize the DHS model I presented at the beginning. So uh, we are considering the same DHS experiments, but now for two different cells. One, the target cell, that in this case is uh, an umbilical vein uh, endothelial cell, and the other one is a stem cell, so a not specialized cell. And if we get a peak in both cells, it means that these, uh, um, these are uh, generic transcription units, and we color the, um, them in red, while if you got a, a peak only in UVEC, uh, we colored in, in um, the building, uh, the corresponding building. Giuseppe, hai cinque minuti. In green. So what, um, uh, these, are uh, these are actually uh, spe uh, specialized and housekeeping uh, transcription units, as they are called in the literature, and the complete uh, pipeline is the one, uh, is the one described, uh, shown here. So you can measure the activity, we perform molecular dynamic simulations, um, measure the activity, compare the activity with GROSIC data um, that I explained at the beginning, and what you get is a small increase uh, in the correlation, the Sperman correlation between experiments and, um, and the model. Um, okay, this is just to say that the model is actually able to capture the main features that are uh, driving transcription and the introduction of the, the, um, the, um, the different type of transcription factors are actually uh, the, way to, uh, the way to go. But we are interested in another, uh, in another <clears throat> phenomenon, that is the formation of clusters. And you can see here uh, from a simulation, from a molecular dynamic simulations, where each bead has been colored by uh, the local density, that there are smaller and uh, bigger clusters that are formed, that they are, they are dy dynamical, and the, smallest, uh, the smaller ones are the ones that actually form and disappear. And if you look uh, at the, the composition of these clusters, um, you can see that there, these are, there are both kind of clusters I described at the beginning, so mixed and the mixed clusters. So clusters all, of only one type of proteins and clusters of different type of proteins that are mixed. And to quantify this, uh, um, this behavior, we measured uh, um, the mixing coefficient that is defined uh, in this way, we then is uh, the number of colors in the model, and X is the largest fraction of the same colors transcription units uh, in a cluster. And if you measure it, and you can see it, um, averaging over uh, a thousand simulations, you can see that there is a, a transition at a, a, a precise number of transcription factors in the cluster. So bigger clusters are more mixed, and they are likely the ones that are observed in OTS, while smaller clusters are uh, uh, less mixed and are smaller. So they end up the one that could correspond to, um, <clears throat> to transcription factories. This is quite a, uh, a behavior that we, we tested in different cells and different chromosomes. Here is just another plot of the same quantity as before. Um, uh, the only difference is that we color the points with the, um, the counts of, uh, uh, of the clusters, and this parameter uh, tilde, theta, uh, theta tilde here um, actually is able to distinguish distinguish between uh, mixed class, uh, the mixed clusters of one color and the mixed cl clusters of the other color. But this is quite a, it seems to be quite a universal uh, um, uh, behavior, uh, at least in experiments. So with the introduction of this multicolor model, we were able to reproduce some already known results about specialized factories. But the novelty is that we have uh, the mixing transition that is uh, the, the um, most likely candidate uh, to reconcile the vision of the odds and tr the existence of transcription factories. Uh, in addition, we also, I didn't show you uh, just for, uh, for the time, the, um, we characterize the correlation networks between different uh, uh, transcription units. And what we are doing right now, uh, actually inspired by the simulations of uh, um, 
the pattern strings and random string is to try to um, uh, propose a, a formula to predict the, the activity of a gene. And the uh, preliminary results are quite good. And uh, uh, this simple formula uh, is actually able to, um, uh, starting from uh, some, some con very simple considerations and putting uh, into it just the distance from the nearest gene and um, the probability of a loop, you can get exactly, uh, you can get actually with a very good uh, correlation with experimental data, the activity of a gene, just computing the probability of a gene to transcribe. And with this, I really thank you for your attention. Grazie, thank you very much, uh, Giuseppe. So, time to questions, comments. I, I, I have a very general, uh, basic question. What does the, the length the, in the experiments, uh, and say, let's say, and also in your uh, toy models, what are the the important length scales. I mean, if one is the microscopic length, when I I speak about the micro phase separation, uh, I think to some uh, length lambda appearing, which is typically much larger than one, and which is also much smaller than the largest size L of the system. What, what is lambda and what is L in, 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 your, in, in, in your systems? So, yeah, uh, thank you very much. So, it, it, it gives the opportunity also to, <coughs> to clarify another point. But anyway, um, so in uh, the simulation of the real chromosomes, each bead is actually, let's say, it's uh, um, one sigma. And uh, the, 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 um, the clusters are about uh, uh, 15 sigma in uh, linear joint units. So the size of the cluster, you can see you have a dis actually a distribution. You have this, uh, the mixing transition, but uh, the, the, mix the mixing transition happens actually uh, at uh, about 10 sigma. And uh, the, entire, um, uh, the entire chain is about uh, 35,000 sigma. So, as length scales, we are in a good position, but we also tested uh, some uh, simulations with the smaller transcription factors. The result is again seems to be quite universal. Um, it doesn't change this uh, this transition, and we also tested uh, so chromatin in the nucleus is not actually in this configuration. This is a dilute configuration, while in the nucleus you have a, a high density chromatin uh, configuration. So to uh, to to test the the, um, uh, the, the, the this, to to study this transition in this context, we perform simulation with uh, uh, confined chromatin, and again the result is uh, um, quite similar. These are simulations with uh, less statistics. That is why this is quite uh, oscillating here. But I mean, this 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 transition seems to be quite uh, uh, universal. But is it possible to perform experiments and change some control parameter in order to change the size lambda of the microphase separated regions? Um, I'm not aware of some experiments about that, just because maybe I'm not an expert. It's the only an expert uh, on experiments. But the, the, the thing is that um, in this, uh, um, so what experiments can say, and uh, um, actually this is, this is something uh, our collaborator in, in Edinburgh uh, is doing, is to measure the size of these clusters in two different situations, not without changing parameter. So you can measure, uh, like for example, the typical size that is actually known and is compatible at least for polymerases, uh, for, uh, sorry, for transcription factories um, in our case. Uh, and you can measure the same size uh, in these uh, HOTs, in these high gil occupancy targets. And since you know also the composition of these, uh, you can uh, um, study the structure with experiments of so the composition of these high gil occupancy targets, uh, you can get something uh, to compare with our 
uh, with our simulations. That is the, the, the only thing you can do. I'm not aware of an experiment where you can change the size of this cluster uh, with, with a control parameter. Okay, so you cannot tune, let's say, the size lambda, but you can consider different experimental situations where lambda is different. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Is there any additional comment, question? If not, I thank, let's thank Giuseppe and also Martina again. And uh, so, see you in, uh, in October as usual, the second Thursday of the month. Thank you to everybody. Goodbye. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao.